Friday afternoon arrivals at Bowstring Airport for the long weekend. Perfect weather for a fly-in with the Bowstring Flyers at the Bowstring Airport in northwestern Minnesota. Mark Matheson borrowed this beaver and brought it in from Grand Rapids. There was quite a story behind it. I lost that clip. I don't know what happened to it. But at least we'll look inside of the aircraft a little bit, and then Mark's going to tell you about the bullet holes in the airplane, because it was in Vietnam a long time ago. These are bumps from bullets that bounced around in the, inside the aircraft. They, they went in the belly of the airplane and bounced around and fell back and just laid in the belly. This one was a 50 caliber shell that went through it. The military fixed this one when it was over in Vietnam. Kind of a crazy patch, but that was a hole from a shell that it took on the side. There's a piece of wood and an equipment shelf, and they left that, e that piece of equipment shelf in the belly inside. It's still got a hole right through it. Huh. Now that 50 caliber, must have went straight through. Yeah, it and they reskinned the corner because it took out a, a, a former. Yeah, it, it had it got hit more than once. You know that 50 caliber should go absolutely straight through. Oh, there's no question. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and they fixed the, the there was two or three in the belly. They fixed them because they were worried about stuff getting up inside. You know. Oh sure. Uh, tomorrow I'll have to pull that other cover because it shows that disintegrated hole where it went through a shelf. Yeah, this is the main one. Ken Reichert, I'm the manager of the Bowstring Airport uh, and a local contractor in the area. Uh, Who owns the airport? City? Private? It's a, it's a county airport. Uh, Bo, it's called Bowstring uh, Itasca County Airport. So the uh, county uh, helps support us in this uh, program and then some uh, state money also. How many years have you been having a fly-in? Has it always been in the fall? And there's always been a fall fly-in. It, it used to be only one Sunday, uh, or one, yeah, Sunday, the last Sunday of September. But uh, five years ago, we started camping out on Friday through uh, Sunday uh, and uh, kind of extended it out to, to get more people and get more activity at the airport. How many years has this been going on? Th this is the fifth year, I believe, of, of uh, having of a long weekend fly-in. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it's probably been, well, I've been here for, 10 or 15 years and and it was going before that for the Sunday uh, chili feed how many uh, how many airplanes are kept here you know 
Well, there's uh, there used to be five. I think now there's only two or three air three airplanes here right now that that stay here. Uh, what's the menu for Friday night for as far as eats? Well, Friday night here we've got uh, burgers and brats and hot dogs, chili, baked potatoes. It's kind of going to be the uh, recipe for the whole weekend, and then of course breakfast, uh, pancakes, eggs, sausage for the mornings, coffee. Yeah. So full, mm -hmm. full uh, eat. And lots then of eat. Uh, Saturday. Saturday afternoon, and same thing, same hamburger thing. brats. Yeah. And Sunday morning. Make, making it easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you certainly. And breakfast Sunday morning, and then that's a wrap. Uh, no, we, we'll go till 2, 3 o'clock. It'll be burgers and chili oh, wow. and, and the whole works all the way through. So it doesn't look good for Sunday for weather-wise. looks like rain, but uh, uh, we get the first two days here. It'll be nice. That would be nice. Yeah. All right, thanks, Ken. You bet. Thank you. What a perfect Friday evening for the fly-in. As the planes came in against the color and the sun was starting to go down, we just basically sat in chairs for a while and watched the planes come in. We tried to interview all the pilots and find out about the airplane, but we missed a few. Sorry about that, but we just couldn't get to everybody. Randy Hilliard from Bemidji. Randy, what what'd you fly in with? I got a Pacer, a PA-2220 Pacer converted to a tail dragger, 160 horse. That was my next question, the horsepower. <laughs> now being a float person, has this ever been on floats? No, it's never been on floats. No, no, they're, uh, I have seen them on floats. They, they do, uh, they do fly them on floats, but they're probably not as, you know, they've got pretty short wings and uh, so, Probably not the uh, yeah. ideal float plane, but they do put them on floats, and they do pretty good. I uh, saw one and flew one in the Little Ferry Seaplane Base in New Jersey. They had 180 horse derated uh, something. Yeah. So I can handle the short wing, I guess. Now, is this your first time here at this fly-in, or have you been here before? I, uh, it's been a few years, quite yeah, quite a few years. I've been here before, but not for not for said, not for a while. Well, it's looking good for, for for Saturday for all of us. Yeah, it's a beautiful day. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Who am I talking to? Eric Hutchins. Eric, what is the yellow airplane? This is an American Champion Scout, also known as a Blanca Scout, a company prior to that. How, how big is the engine? It's 180 horse, 0360 Lycoming. Now I see a prop on there that looks like it's plastic, is it? No, that's an MT prop. And uh, it's actually a wood core with a composite layer on it. So if you cut that in half with a sawzall, you'd have wood inside, it's wood prop. 
essentially. Eric, you ever have this airplane on floats? No, never on floats. Uh, you got the Tundra wheels. Does that take extra braking, extra brakes on your wheel because of the large wheel? The I STC for these Alaska Bush wheels requires that you have the heavy duty puck brakes, Cleveland's, okay. but uh, most of the new airplanes or newer airplanes, this, the Huskies, the newer Cubs from uh, Cub Crafters and Yakima, the, the Malls, the, uh, all the newer planes have a bolt-on okay. STC because the brakes are already heavy duty. I saw a jest at the Moberg uh, fly in, in August and he had two sets of brake pucks because of the large wheels on a, on a jest. I think it's called a jest. Was that a, a experimental? Or a home I build? think it was. I think it was. It's good because you know this is a lot of momentum to slow down. So a lot of people that put the bush wheels on like a, a plane like this, of course, you probably would run out of brake if you don't have the real heavy duty brakes. And you see pictures of people all the time. I shouldn't say all the time. They they're landing on the water with the big wheels. Now, do the brakes have to be on or the brakes have to be off when you touch the water? You can do both. But some people are just skimming, and then some people, of course, there's videos where they actually hit the water, and then they go from water to land and actually make a full stop landing. A lot of people just skim. You don't need to hold the brakes. Just leave, leave, let, let the wheel spin the minute it hits. Yeah, and, and depending on how you have your bearing and your nut set, your wheels may not spin at all. Because with water and the smoothness of the tire, they may just hardly even rotate, depending okay. on how much, you know, stick pressure you have on Okay. It. That would make me nervous to try that. I can just visualize it going over. Well, I don't think your insurance company would be very happy. No, I just... <laughs> Thanks, Eric. You're welcome. Friday afternoon was a great time to arrive because, well, there's going to be dinner that night, a campfire, and a few war stories from some of the pilots. It was a perfect evening. There wasn't much wind yet. The little sun came out to add some color. What a weekend for the fly-in. Now, Sunday was scheduled to be part of the fly-in, but the forecast was so bad, uh, everyone decided to leave uh, late uh, Saturday afternoon.
Hi. Uh oh, we're on TV. Yep. Who am I talking to? Dennis Callhammer, Dennis and Kathy Callhammer from Little Falls, Minnesota. We got we got the Moberg flying. What then? We got the Moberg Air Base flying. We were not. Okay. We were not. And what are you flying here today? Today we we came in on a 74 Blanca Super Viking. Horsepower is. Horsepower is what? 300 horse. Oh, that's why. Okay. 300 horse. Have you been to this flying before? No, we haven't. Okay. We've heard about it, and I've always thought about it. Now, this is the weekend to do it. From this is Kent Nordell, my wife Donna. We're from Staples. From Staples, yeah. Yep, we flew in in a 1981 P model Skyhawk with a 180 horse in it. Oh, 180. Oh, okay, yep. okay. Yep. Is this your first time here? It is not our first time here. It's oh. our second time camping here and probably our fourth time flying in here. So, well, we had. Did you, did you go to Moberg's uh, Air Base flying? We did not make that. Okay. The weather. So, the weather didn't cooperate. No, no, we I hit we to. hit several of them, but uh, we didn't make Moberg. Well, maybe next year. Maybe next we year. Got it's sea. always on our list. So. It's, there's the lake right there for the seaplanes, right yeah. next to the runway. Yep, that's right. It's, but I think the food's a little better here now. I just checked it out. <laughs> good deal. <laughs> that's why we came okay. for that good yeah. food. <laughs> Thanks for talking to me. Bye bye. Oh, you bet. Bye. <laughs> Well, I, yeah, we'll I cheated. Right. I brought a camper, an RV. Oh, that's, <laughs> you're the cheater. Yeah. Well, I have all the equipment and so forth, so I need, sure. need the room. Now that's actually waterproof? Very waterproof. We, um, this is a new tent for us this year and we used it a couple times before Oshkosh. The first time was in Aikens flying in and we probably got about two inches of rain on us that, oh. uh, that inaugural tent and dry as a bone. We stayed dry all through Oshkosh so okay. this is a keeper. <laughs> we're both just around. That, the, the brand name is Kelly? Kelty. Kelty? Kelty. Kelty. Oh, yeah. Yep. Sure. Where'd the airplane come from? Uh, we bought the airplane out of Burgess Falls, uh, from a broker out of Burgess Falls. And uh, we've owned it for 10 years now. And just before Oshkosh, we decided to put the uh, ADSV. Um, uh, equipment in it, so I put a Garmin uh, 345 in it and tied that with a Garmin 650 GPS. Did you say that was a CAP plane from before? It was a CAP plane. It went on auction, yep. And they had just put the 180 horse in it just before it was put on auction, so I bought it with less than 400 hours on it. Oh. So right place, been, right time. Exactly, yep. So I wasn't looking for a 180 horse Skyhawk, but it ended up uh, working out so I'm very happy that I ended up with it so, so it's got a lot of a lot of useful load because of that it went from I think the, the stock 830 pounds to 1050 useful load because of that engine so, thank you David for doing these videos we appreciate it you're welcome it is very very nice we appreciate that
Brad Johnson. From where, Brad? Park Rapids, Minnesota. And you're flying what? It's a Aviat Husky, A1C. And the horsepower of that engine? 180. Ooh, being a seaplane guy, has it ever been on floats? This one hasn't. It has the fittings for it, and a lot of them do, but this particular one has not. The fittings come from the factory that way? Yep. That's not an option then, it comes on there? Yeah, they come ready for floats. Are you gonna do floats? I don't think so. Okay, you're having too good a time. Yeah. This is your first time at the flying here? Uh, no, I was here probably three years ago, I think. Okay, welcome and thank you. Thanks. Ken Ryan. From where, Ken? Alexandria, Minnesota. Were you at the Moberg flying? I was. That's that's where I saw yeah. you. What are you flying? This is a Champ uh, 7AC converted to a CCM with a 90 horse. Uh, what does CCM mean? I don't know. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it was converted to. Yeah. Well, welcome to the flying. It looks like you're ready yep. for the night if, if you have a warm sleeping bag. I do. Oh, then you got it made. Okay, talk to you later. Okay, thank you. Got a flyby coming here. Yep. Hard to follow. I also know you. Oh, we got it all going the right way. What's that? Who needs the instructions, huh? Oh, uh -oh. Jeff McManigal. Where are you from, Jeff? Wasakis, Minnesota. I don't know where that is. East of Alexandria. Okay, got it. Close. What are you flying today? Uh, 1966 Polanka, 1419. First time here at the fly-in at Bowstring? Uh, first time for the fly-in, not the first time in here. 
Okay, first time. Okay, well, welcome to the fly-in, and thanks for talking to us. All right, thank you. Well, for whatever reason, if you couldn't make it to the fly on Friday night, this gives you some idea of the chow serve. It was good, and there was plenty, enough to go around for everybody. <laughs> We're watching what you're eating. We're checking your calories. I have to remember that big black microphone so I don't put it into the food. <laughs> Where are you from? Staples. Little Falls. Staples. We're, you, from, you? we're from Little Falls. <laughs> oh, okay. <coughs> so are you camping up here tonight? Yes. Can you believe that? Do you have a house close by? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you well, might have company. Well, there is a spare bedroom in there, isn't there? Oh, I didn't get this one. Just to go out with the fly. There were a few who elected not to stay on Friday night, leave, and then come back on Saturday. I guess the bed's more comfortable than sleeping bag on the ground in a tent. The leaf color was supposed to have peaked about a week or two weeks ago, but this year it's behind. But for us, at the Bowstring Flyers Fly-In, it was a perfect weekend for good color. You're about to see something that I did not know grass landing strips had, and that's called night lights. How about that? Now, I asked Ken if he had many people landing at night. He said no, but he knows of a couple of people that use the night lights. Is that for tonight's firewood? Yeah. yeah. Where did it come from? Oh, down between the hangers. I don't think we're going to run out of wood. Hi, Mark, do you live close by here or what? Uh, Grand Rapids. Oh, okay. Yeah. The campfire is a great place to exchange pilot stories. The one that really caught my attention was Mark Matheson, who used to fly over the ocean in a, um, a water bomber or an ag plane called a fire bus. He had fuel for nine hours or ten hours in the hopper and then fuel in the wing, and he flew over the ocean for eight to nine hours. I call that Russian roulette. He did it a couple times. Their early arrivals rolled me out of bed, grabbed my clothes and camera and got outside, able to get some good video. I should have known the coffee was on and the eggs and the bacon and the toast and everything was about to follow.
Pacific Yellow Gyrocopter is uh, over the airport, vertical descent, landing bow string, rotorcraft to bow string. I didn't hit the record button. I thought I did. Oh. I, got, I got excited about it. So I. Nobody has ever done that before. <laughs> this year? No, you're the first that's ever forgot to push the record button. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, Jesus, I just put a, or, a fingerprint on you. <laughs> or, or uh, you know, forget to put film in the camera and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah Nobody's yeah. ever done that before. Well, I'm going to see what's on you. See what's on the stove here. Okay. Okay, Dave, we're going to go for a ride here. Okay. You excited about this? First time in this gyrocopter. I looked at them for years and never bought one. Now maybe things will change after I take a ride in this machine. Yabba dabba do. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go have some fun. Okay. Okay, time for headset. Once we get, uh, once I get in and squared away, I'm going to turn the uh, uh, radio on and then we'll have intercom. I'm here at the Brown Building, or maybe a little bit more. To get going to get the RPM up on the rotor. <laughs> okay, come okay. In here. Dave, is there anything you want to see in our a, a little trip around here? Do you know the neighborhood? No, just yeah, just, just right around here. That's all. Okay. Uh, the airport, basically. This is video for them. All right. Well, like I had mentioned earlier, I have been looking at gyrocopters at the Oshkosh Airshow for years. 
I couldn't get over how these things can land in 10 feet. But the takeoff run was something like a 150. It was uh, not as short as I thought it was going to be. But I never rode in one, and this was the first time. I wish I had put a microphone in the headset so you could hear what was being said. When we got up into the air, this machine did some maneuvers I didn't know what it could do, and my, it caused my heart to start to thump. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out a way to, how to get this audio, but I can't. This side, there is a microphone. Okay, can it be coming? Not camera out of the way. This maneuver was a surprise. It got a little altitude, and all of a sudden the gyrocopter turned on a dime. I couldn't believe we just turned right around. You couldn't do that in an airplane. Well, we did a few more stunts that got my attention. Very impressive. Now how about this for a complete 360 in the gyrocopter? This was Saturday morning. There were more planes coming in, about a total of 35 or 36 shot. Wow! In an airplane that would have been a very tight maneuver, 60 degree bank, and they wouldn't do, wouldn't do that that low. 
around and around and around in a tight pattern and then drop down a little bit, pick up some speed, and do a flyby. At one point when we were at altitude and there was enough wind, the gyrocopter actually went backwards at about 10 miles an hour. I've never seen that before. That was just amazing. Bingo. There we go. Copter does this, you know, wop, 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 you take off and it pulls you through mm -hmm. the air. This one, you saw me out there, yeah, the, spin yeah, up the ahead of time, yeah. and yeah. it's like this all the time, as if the air was coming up from the bottom. Sure. So it's always coming up that way. And that's so turning it then. Always. Oh. Auto, just like a helicopter doing this, and oh shit, the engine quits, and he does auto rotation, and he finds a place to land. He's no longer going like this, he's doing this. Okay. And that's what okay. this does 100% yeah, yeah. of the time, otherwise it doesn't work. So if you're in a, a zero wind situation, then you need to have forward, forward motion. Forward yep. motion. So you can't necessarily hover, no. but you need to have that wind working for you. Exactly. Um, Damned. This, um, if the wind was coming this way, if right now it's coming across the trees and get some road around the runway and all kinds of stuff. You can see these leaves over here with this open space. Yeah. They're going in the direction of the wind, but over here we've got rotor. So um, there is no headwind for takeoff. What I'm getting at is if there's a headwind, just like any airplane, your takeoff and landing distance decreases. Yeah. But this has normally, from here to that Cessna, takeoff that. distance. Yeah. With a little bit of headwind, yeah. Yeah. it's here to yeah. there. Yeah. So there yeah. for takeoff yeah. distance. And wow. in this other gyro I have, one day on a nice windy, hey, a nice windy uh, airport, uh, took off straight up with oh, wow. the wind. But the airplane, the aircraft doesn't know, the rotor doesn't know if it's uh, wind caused by the propeller pushing it or by the air going across it yeah. from the wind. So we just lift it straight up. Wow. Oh, amazing. Jeez. How long did it take you to build it? 
uh, week. Really? Yep. Uh, <laughs> the uh, company, ELA, out of Spain, uh, has designed it so it's complying with the FAA rules, the 51% rules. For example, the empanage. I didn't build the empanage. They, they got a point for building the empanage, and I got a point for attaching the three bolts and putting the rudder cables on. Hmm. So at some place along the line, I got an extra point, so 51%. Um, unlike an RV and you know you spend two or three years pounding rivets, um, that's not the way to wow. the factory assist program, build it on site. Wow. What's the structure made of? Aluminum? Carbon fiber. Oh carbon fiber. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh wow. No kidding. Is, is there a time limit on the rotor? It's Can a couple thousand hours. It it's good for my lifetime. What are they made out of the rotor blades? Extruded aluminum core. Okay. Wrapped with uh, carbon fiber. Okay. Wow. Amazing. Let me show you uh, huh. this thing. How light this thing is. This is a low carbon fiber, including this shell, this engine cooling air intake covering the engine. Is the engine water cooled or air cooled? Check this out. Is that amazing? Pretty light. <laughs> yeah, oh it's like God. piece of paper. <laughs> wow. Absolutely nothing here. Check that out. <laughs> and it's strong. Like a feather. Yes. Um, Very more strong. Than fiberglass. You know that oh, yeah. same oh, component yeah. in fiberglass would be a little bit heavier, still it's light, still but strong. carbon yeah, fiber is amazing stuff. He's also got uh, turbo charge on here. Yeah, I know. It. Jeez. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> that's where that is. Yeah. They're not here. Oh, oh my gosh, is that? Wow. Absolutely. And that's strong stuff. Oh, that's heavier cardboard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know. Okay. okay. Well, that's your baggage compartment. Yep. A little cubby there. Oh, Rotax 915, turbocharged with carburetors. Who builds a turbocharger? A company. Rot oh, I don't know who individually, but it's a yeah. Rotax factory. Option. Okay. Not an aftermarket thing. I see. Oh yeah. Wow. You got some pretty serious cooling intakes there. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Sure different than the gyrocopters I remember from years back, huh? Yeah, well, years ago it was the triangles, tubes and triangles that make up the strength today. Uh, composite, whether it's fiberglass or carbon fiber, it's whatever the designer can imagine. And whatever mold you can make, that's what you're going to get. Wow. Mm. Just like the little airplanes that are being made today, they don't look like the original uh, Cessna oh. 140s. Yeah. Amazing. Huh. What was the iPad again? A Mini 4? iPad Mini 4. On your seat. Where's the other? <laughs> did you fly a fixed wing before you? I did. Um, Airline pilot for a while and all kinds of stuff from the time I was a kid. God, that's quite a machine. Well, you see, that was not day one stuff there. Was <laughs> no. Just got checked out last week. <laughs> <laughs> you do that once. I got my pilot's license a month ago. Well, I want to tell you, to be in this flying machine and then hear him say whoops on the headset, Get your attention. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I lie. <laughs> he just does that for effect. We know for a fact you're going up Madison. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Dave, uh, get a picture of this. Student, <laughs> <laughs> student pilot. I guess Holy I, smokes. I guess I should have told him. Boom, boom. He passed out, guys. He's on the ground. <laughs> He's close to soloing. Dave. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Well, it was uh, a, hell of a hell of a new experience for me, especially the tight turns and... Uh, oh, that's crazy. That's really well, you can see it from the ground. I don't know how good the picture is going to come out because I'm hanging on to the camera as best I can and, and I don't want to scratch up the uh, plexiglass by touching it. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Now, I think I'm going to... The next stop here is the little blue houses over here called the outhouse. What is this little white thing? Is that... 
Is that a light? It's, a, it's an area light. They call it a landing light in the brochure, but it's not. It's an area light. Okay. Well, it's LED, it looks like. LED lights. Good for being seen, but not exactly. It's, it's worthless for a landing light. Dan Poplar from Buffalo, Minnesota. Where's Buffalo, Minnesota? It is about 184 miles south. Oh, you, okay, you took it took a while to get you there. Yeah, about two hours. Okay, is this your first time here at Bowstring? Yes, it is. Beautiful grass runway. I've never seen a grass runway that has lights on it. Yeah, it's very nice. This one does. What are you, what are you flying? I am flying a 1966 PA-28-140. That is a Cherokee. Okay. Have you had it very long, or? I bought it two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yep. What'd you have before that? Uh, I rented before that. Well, then you're off to a good start. It looks like. Yes, I am. Okay. Welcome to Bowstring. Talk Thank to you, you later. Thank you. Have a good day. All quiet on the set. Welcome to Bowstring Airport. Who am I talking to? Thank you. Uh, my name is Dan Blaise. Where's Dan from? I am from Cloquet, Minnesota. That's where the airplane is based at. How far of a flight is that for you in time to here? Uh, let's see, that was 78 statute miles. Okay. It took me about 45 minutes today. And the airplane I've never seen before, what is it? This is a one-of-a-kind creation. Uh, it basically started out, a guy was helping me up in Bemidji. Uh, we got it going. Uh, it's called the Wilderness Storm, but I have to call it a Protec for insurance reasons. You cannot get insurance for a one-of-a-kind airplane. I built this plane from scratch, and uh, it took me about 10 years. I started flying it in 2000. I've been flying it since then. I got over 500 hours on it now. What size horsepower do you have in there? This is about 170. It's a six-cylinder Subaru engine. And I figure it's around, I, I thought originally it was a lot lower than that, but I'm, I'm getting about 170 horsepower. You never know that many engines in this colony. This it's compact. It's very oh, compact. I guess so. Now, how do you come about this prop, the four-bladed prop? It's a warp drive prop. Uh, warp, warp makes it. Uh, I originally started out with a three-bladed prop, but I had uh, too much power from the engine, and I'd had to adjust the, the blades uh, so so much that I was getting, uh, well, I had to go to a four-bladed prop, worked much better. Now, what do you mean by warp drive? Warp is the manufacturer. Oh, okay. That's the manufacturer. Okay. They're ground adjustable. You have to loosen up the hubs and you can uh, change it with a little protractor. Thank you. You're very welcome. I'm an avionics electrician. Okay. I used to work at the big major airlines. Okay. I, I did all my own wiring. I know how to do it. Well, I understand that. I'm into ham radio a lot. Welcome to Bowspring. Who am I talking to? Thank you, uh, Richard Matson, uh, uh, out of Cloquet. Okay, and what are you flying? Uh, I'm flying a Titan Tornado, uh, the two model. Uh, it's a two-place uh, inline um, pusher. Um, it's uh, home built. I didn't build it myself. I like to fly too much, so <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so uh, it flies real well, about 100 miles an hour and a 15 gallon tank, so I can do 250 on a stretch. What is the photo on the front of your aircraft for? Uh, that is my Aunt Sally. Um, when uh, she was, just before she passed away, she told me that I was gonna inherit some money from her. 
and she told me that when she was gone, I took good, such good care of her while she was alive that she wanted me to use that money to have so, do something fun. And so when she passed, I uh, got $30,000 from her and I purchased Aunt Sally here. That's what I named my airplane. <laughs> good for you. Welcome to Bowstring and thank you. Thank you. Sure, Frank Vittorio, Mark Loke, Minnesota. And what are you flying, Frank? This is a Piper J4, 1939. You had it for a long time? Uh, about 10 years. I see if you got a Continental engine. Is that a 190, 190 horse or what? 85 horse. 85 horse, yeah. okay. Welcome to Bowstring. Okay. Thank you. Welcome to Bowstring Airport. Who am I talking to? I'm John Welna from the Cloquet Airport. John, what are you flying today? My 46 Champ, 65 booming horsepower. Has it ever been on floats? Nope. Have you had the airplane very long? Yeah, about 10 years. I, uh, I got almost all my time in this airplane, so. Is it for sale? It will be in the spring. Oh. Because I'm restoring another one, so. Well, do you wanna, do you wanna put a phone number on here? You want well, to uh, it's up to you. I could. Well, just give me your phone number. 428-8697. 428-8697, area code 218. 218, right. Got it. Thank you. Welcome. You bet. Thank you. Nice airport. I think so. Welcome to Bowstring Airport. Who am I talking to this time? Thank you. Bowstring's great. My name is Frank Lane. And I'm out of Cloquet, EAA-1221. That was important to know. Frank, tell me about your airplane. What am I looking at? This is a 65 horse, 1946 Aronica Chief. Have you had it for a long time? I've been flying behind this engine for 11 years. Oh, I guess you have, okay. Well, with that horsepower, it probably has never been on floats then. No. Not enough horsepower for Not it. Not enough horsepower. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Welcome to Bowstring. Who am I talking to today? My name is David Wallen. I'm from Hill City, Minnesota. And what are you flying, Dave? I'm flying a 1946 Halocraft BC 12D with a 65 horse Continental. Welcome to Bowstring. Thank you. Minnesota. A lot of planes from Cloquet this morning. Yes sir, we're a flying community. What are you flying? This is a Vans RV6, 160 horse. 100, wow. Well, welcome to Bowstring. Thank you. We appreciate being here. Thanks for having us.
Welcome to Bowstring. Who am I talking to this My morning? name is Mike, all the way from Cloquet, along with these other guys. Well, everybody's from Cloquet yeah. this morning. Yeah. What a what Cloquet. a day for a fly-in. Cloquet, yeah, hey. absolutely. Tell me about your airplane. 1938, pre-war chief. I feel like I'm flying a, a piece of history when I'm in this this airplane. Yep. Yeah. Horsepower? 65 horsepower is what it's advertised as. Okay. Did Lindbergh fly that airplane? Well, you know, uh, that's what he told me. Yeah. Okay. Well, you said you wanted to sell it, right? You're thinking about it. Well, maybe, you know. Okay. Do you want to put your phone number on here? Or sure. No? So yeah. give me your phone number nice and slow, starting with the area code. Okay, 218-390-2850. Got it. We'll see what we can do for you. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. Wow. Welcome to Bowstring. Who am I talking to? Uh, Joel Kirsting. Glad where, to be here. Where are you from, Joel? Where'd you fly from? Uh, I flew from Grand Rapids. Oh, you're close by then. Yep. And yep. what did you fly in? What am I looking at? It's a 1946 Champ uh, 7DC. Started out as a 7AC, so it's somewhere along the line it got upgraded to uh, electric. Was it ever on floats, do you know? Not that I know of, but... Okay. It, What's the horsepower inside here now? 85. Okay, 85 it, Continental. That would work on floats. It's enough power. Yeah. Someday, maybe. <laughs> Welcome to Bowstring. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I didn't see it at first, but there was a hill, and when the uh, pilot started to go up on the hill and watch what's going on, I took the camera up there. It was an excellent place to be with the camera. Okay, so he went down. We just flew it on there in a commercial plane, and, and I didn't even have a license yet. <laughs> That looks good. Yep, that's the best part. They're going to rest with the high cost charge. Clean out.
we all knew the forecast for Sunday was rain. We didn't know how much. This was the absolutely perfect fall day to have a fly-in. But in the middle of the afternoon, maybe about 3 o'clock, it was time to leave the airport and uh, think about coming back next year. These following, following videos are just takeoff scenes for the pilots heading for home. <laughs>